What is an artificial neural network? How does it look conceptually? And how does it work? This is the topic of today's video. And to make the subject a bit more relatable, let's use a friendly example. Imagine you are a coffee lover and you are ready to take the leap and start your own cafe and bakery. You've got the business plan, you figured out the loan conditions, you thought through the menu. The only thing left to do is find a good location that will give you enough visitors. But how do you decide? There are so many parameters related to a location of a cafe that can influence the success of the cafe. Well, that's where a trained artificial network can help. In this video, we'll conceptually build such a model that can predict how successful a cafe can be based on the neighborhood of the location. For this, we will need some kind of data set, a collection of information about various factors that can influence the success of a cafe based on the location. By examining successful and unsuccessful cafes in regards to their locations, we'll train a neural network to recognize patterns even if they are not most obvious to us humans. Once our model is trained, we will be able to give it the information about the location of our choosing and get the likelihood if our cafe will be successful at that spot or not. Let's dive in and see how it all works. First, training the model. Imagine we have the following input parameters. First, information on demographics in the area. Age range, gender, income level, education level and occupation of the population. I am putting all of those together but, of course, in the real neural network, we will have to use those separately uh, as input parameters. Food traffic – the number of people passing by the location. Competition – number and types of existing cafes and restaurants in the area. Nearby businesses – presence of complementary businesses such as uh, bookstores, boutiques, gyms, so whatever you have there rent and overhead costs. And this is our input layer. On the opposite side, we have an output layer. Output layer can consist of one or more items, but to keep it simple, let's have only one answer, the probability score that the location is good and the value from 0 to 1, the higher the better. And between the input and output layer, we have the brain part of the artificial neural network, all the hidden layers. For now, let's add just one. At a basic, very simple level, we already have enough for the neural network to work. So let's define several important concepts that surround artificial neural network. This will be the Lego blocks of any model. First of all, each element of the neural network is a neuron. Or it is often also called a node because it is a teeny tiny computational building block that takes some input, performs a simple mathematical operation on it and produces an output. The mathematical operation the neuron performs is called activation function. The activation function plays a role of a filter. It takes in the input and decides whether or not it should fire the output to the next neuron in the network. In other words, it makes a decision if a combination of the incoming data is really important or not. For example, is there a valuable correlation between food traffic and nearby businesses 
that when combined gives us a good prediction on the success of our future cafe. Can it be that a barber shop nearby guarantees that you will get thirsty groomed visitor eager to drink a cup of coffee? Or maybe sporty people, after going to a gym, want to grab a healthy smoothie. The activation function itself is just mathematics, but it works in a way that adds a bit of sharpness to our model, what we call non-linearity. Non-linearity means that relationship between the input and the output is not an easily predictable straight line uh, and a small change in the input information can result in the bigger change in the output. And this allows our model to spot conclusions that are not that obvious to a human eye. Important to know that for the activation function, we don't just take the input values as they are. Input values that are given to us are static. They are basic truth. We need something that allows the model to shape the direction of thinking and explore different scenarios and be trained. And this is what the weights are for. For example, what will contribute more to the success of a cafe, a nearby pet grooming salon or a lot of single person households with pets? Or maybe a young demographics of the neighborhood? The answer might not be so obvious and you might want to play with the weights to choose parameters to see how changing them improves the result accuracy. So the weights are assigned to the connections. We need to choose some initial weights, but they are not set in stone. During each iteration, the neural network has an ability to change those weights based on the learnings it made and errors. Now let's discuss how exactly the artificial network learns. During the training, we give the model information from our existing dataset for every existing location and the model then makes a prediction. Since we use existing data, we already know the answer. We already know if the location was any good for a cafe. So we can compare the predicted by model result to the actual one based on reality and tell the model how much it was wrong when making that prediction. The mathematical function that we use to calculate how far was the model's result from the actual one we call a cost function. By looking at the level of the error, the model goes backwards from the output layer to the input layer and adjusts the weights. This is done by calculating what is called the gradient of the error for each of the weights. And using this information, model can then adjust the weights to make better predictions next time. Overall, this process is called back propagation. And over time, with enough practice, the model becomes better and more accurate at making predictions. Ideally, not always. For example, our network, I expect that as it is, will just get stuck. The question we asked is quite complex and with just three layers, there is not enough space to get that model exploration going. If we add more layers, this will allow the network to extract more complex and abstract features and build logic on the lower level features that were extracted in earlier layers. Although it doesn't come for free, since training a more complex model will take longer and adding more layers doesn't always bring better results. To illustrate this with a real but simple to understand example, let me show you a neural network in TensorFlow Playground. 
If you are not yet familiar with TensorFlow, it is a free and open source software library for machine learning and artificial intelligence built by Google and has a very nice playground where you can see different data sets and you can solve uh, two types of problems, classification and regression. We are looking at classification one. Here we also can change some other parameters and one of the interesting one is this activation function which we discussed. We have several options. We will use those a bit later as well. So uh, if you start running this, uh, training this model, it will try to detect the area where all the yellow items should go. So if you add a yellow item or is it orange item, then it should go into this area. And if it's blue, it will go into the middle. And you can see that actually very quickly it figured out uh, and it works nicely. We can even uh, remove uh, some of the hidden layers and leave only maybe one. And let's see if it will still work. Yeah, it figures out. So the problem here is pretty simple. We have other data sets and they seem to be also pretty straightforward. However, the interesting one I find is the last one. So let me add the hidden layer back and then we run this model and it tries to figure out and put all the yellow ones somewhere over here and the blue ones over there. And you can see that it's uh, it's not really going that fast. Let's give it a bit of a time. There is definitely a progress over here. However, you can still see that this part is not doing good. Also this one. So maybe it will just take an enormous amount of time. However, let's pause it and let's add another hidden layer and maybe increase the number of neurons and start it again. And see if that makes a difference once we have a bit more layers. Yeah. I don't think it goes anywhere and I think it's kind of stuck a bit. Let's change the activation function. Let's try with Verlu and I think we see a better progress here, even though it still suffers. Yeah, I'm not sure we will get anything meaningful here. But you can play with this uh, playground, set different properties such as activation functions. I think that's quite interesting. Uh, play with the number of the hidden layers you want to have. You can see there is a really big struggle with this particular data set, which is quite interesting. In this video, we discussed how artificial neural networks work. In our example, we tried to detect a pattern between a cafe location and its popularity. However, you might imagine that the same strategy won't work for other use cases. For example, this won't be sufficient for building a chatbot or doing meaningful translations. Also for image recognition, this is definitely not the full story. General artificial neural networks are powerful machine learning models that can learn to make predictions or classification based on input data. However, they may not be well suited to handle certain types of data such as sequential text or image data. This is where specialized neural networks such as convolutional, recurrent, long short term memory or others play a very important role. But that is the story for future videos. Thank you for watching this till the end. Have a great day and see you in one of the next videos.